Hello and welcome to the first new Kedek reviews of the year. Now technically this is a re-record, hopefully with better audio. Netflix's Big Mouth. Well we've done three other Netflix shows, Bojack Horseman, Voltron Legendary Defender, and we've also done Castlevania. So this is our fourth one. This dark adult comedy talks about one of the most trying times of life, puberty. Yeah, that time in your life where hormones are raging, nothing makes sense. sense if you're a dude, you wanna scratch down there, and if you're a girl, well, let's not go there. This animated sh show talks about the time and trials of three specific kids, but it's more than three. Nick, Jesse, and Andrew. Andrew has just gone through the whole puberty thing. And has a lot to show for it. Nick is on the cuffs of it. And really wants to be part of the party like everything else in his life with his overly romantic borderline sex crazed parents meanwhile the other high school uh, middle schooler by the name of Jesse Klein is also going through the female persuasion of the whole setup and her family life Thought to have been perfect is actually less perfect than it seems. But you're gonna have to watch to figure that out. But seeing that this is an animated comedy, it's a lot more than that. You see, when Andrew went through puberty or started to, he got himself a new friend. And it's not imaginary. A hormone monster named Maurice. And yes, it is exactly the interpretation of what it is. He's constantly dropping sexual innuendos, constantly thinking about sex, and when he's not thinking about sex, he's torturing poor Andrew in the thinking about it. Jesse, on the other hand, has a hormone monstrous to have to deal with that does the same thing, only woman style. Nick, who is oddly named after the show creator, star, and and brainchild Nick Kroll is just a guy stuck in the middle, but there's also other characters that are also stuck. A wannabe magician by the name of Jay who has gone through it now and has certain ways of making himself happy on a young smart girl by the name of Missy who has a thing for Andrew. All this show is about is the trials and tribulations of what comes with puberty. The ups and downs of it all. Mix it in with some of the worst family situations imaginable and you have some cocktail for some interesting comedy. Sadly, the animation doesn't hold up to the character writing chops, seeing that it's big, somewhat slow, stunted, and has this weird look about it, especially in terms of Nick's character that emphasizes the title of the show. He's got a big mouth, both literally and hyperbolically. And if you're into sex stuff, 
it's also good for one thing. But of course, this is YouTube and I'm trying to keep it friendly friendly. You have to do that research yourself. On top of that, their PE coach is kind of a loser. Loser. Everybody in town's kind of weird and, well, it's just not normal. But for all of Big Mouth's overbloated sexual innuendo comedy, it actually tackles upon tough topics, especially in the latter five of the ten episode run. Most notably, abortion, child's out of wedlock, porn addiction, and, well, cheating and, or implied lesbianism. I mean, this stuff gets controversial real quick, but it's done in a way that's surprisingly pull no punches. It's done well, but I'll be the first to tell you, it probably will offend you. Hardly. This subject matter is not usually talked about, and this is the reason why it is in just the way that it's written. Even the cliffhanger ending at episode 10 leaves a lot open, seeing that one of the lead, lead characters finally begins his journey of sorts. And it's left with some interesting plot threads. That's why the latter five are surprisingly great, no matter how risk-taking it is. But I'd be remiss if some of the jokes just don't land as they should. And there's a couple of characters that aren't really necessary that have short stints that take out the early five from being all that interesting. In Salmation, Big Mouth is a show with a lot of potential for something really thought-provoking, similar to BoJack Horseman, but in a different way. Sadly, unlike BoJack Horseman, this had more offensive and more risque material to deal with. So, the chances of it getting a second season is minimal, which is really disappointing. Sans the animation quality, the character building, and the subject matter are really brazen and worthy of respect. It's a watch not only for morbid curiosity of what all the controversy is about, but it might leave you scratching your head or making you think back of when you were going through that time of life. Just too bad, it's not as animated as far-reaching as a thought is. That's why I give Netflix's Big Mouth only a 6 out of 10. Watch it if you got a couple hours to burn and are morbidly curious and have an open mind, please. It takes it to really understand and get to the heart of it. Hopefully, there's a season two to further flush this out and maybe get it to a place much higher. Believe me, I've seen shows that will do it. So, down in the comment section below, if you so dare, tell me your opinion of Netflix's Big Mouth. If you've watched it or Tell me why you won't. And also, check out other reviews that we've done, like my recent review on the game Sonic Forces, as well as my thoughts on BoJack Horseman's fourth 
even if you're interested in the end cards, and make sure to click on the logo to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Nirvana Sparkle. Find peace in your own Nirvana. Thanks for watching.